We are Matt and Jessica, a couple of Michiganders whom, back in 2012, decided they'd had enough of the rat race and shoved off from more distant horizons in their 34-foot sailboat, Serendipity. Taking on parts of the Caribbean and sailing three-quarters of the way across the Atlantic, we arrived in the Azores only to fall into deep longing for a project boat back in Florida. Temporarily throwing away our plans for the med, we crossed back to Florida to begin a complete overhaul on the boat we just purchased, a 1983 Chisalu, a custom aluminum sailboat. For the past year and a half, we've been slaving away as we live aboard to turn her into our dream boat, making lots of mistakes, but also learning along the way. Join us as we get her ready for her first time in the water in 10 years and eventually sail away to those distant horizons once again. In this week's episode, we finally get around to doing the fuel systems, which I promised uh, a couple weeks ago, a few episodes ago, I guess. Matt did end up having to order some new parts. I think they came from China, where we always get our stuff. So it took a while to get it in, but he did finally get around to that. So we have started going through the process now, and I will let him take over as he shows you what he did for that area. And I apologize, it's a little bit dark. Um, unfortunately, we're in an area in the boatyard that actually doesn't allow a ton of light inside, so I apologize for that part. Okay, here's our three of our fuel tanks. So we have a center keel tank, which we think is about 55 gallons, and then two 25 to 30 gallon wing tanks. Uh, and then beyond that, there's another uh, tank in the rear that's going to be a day tank, and that is a about 12 to 15 gallon tank. Um, biggest issue was is they were all gravity fed before to the keel tank and it was drawn off the keel tank. So unfortunately there weren't any valves in place and the way it was set up was pretty primitive. So our big issue was installing valves to be able to close everything off. Now as you can see here this is our attempt at fitting the valves in um, for the feed, the one and a half inch uh, hoses feeding into the tank. Can't really see it real well, but uh, ends up feeding into a T, uh, which we ended up having valves on both sides. I have not supported those yet. Um, they will have a rigid support, so there really isn't uh, any movement with them. But the big issue has been space. Um, to make that work, we've ended up having to do crossovers, which end up, uh, you can't really see it, but they end up leading over to either side. They end up crossing over um, underneath here. Uh, again, feeding the uh, port and starboard tank, and then the middle valve is controlling feed into our center tank, which has a screw off top. And our handy depth gauge, so we can see how much fuel is in that tank. Now, you can see the little barbs welded in um, that's where we're going to end up running our fuel lines and they're going to end up feeding through underneath here past the engine and to this back area with no light into these valves that you can see here so this is going to be our fuel um, uh, pickup valve system then down below that is the fuel vent lines, which we're able to close off each one. And then down below that is going to be our fuel return. So then again, we're able to control and see kind of what's going on here. Uh, so these are the valves for our fuel system. At the top, we have uh, the stainless valves for the from the tanks actually to the engine. So you can see that each one's labeled from center, port, starboard. And then there's going to be a line going down, and that will actually lead to our, our one of our fuel filters, our second fuel filter in line, um, which will then lead to the engine. Down from there, we have our vent lines from the tanks, each one of them. I'm waiting for a fitting to come. I had to order a new stainless fitting for that. And then down here, we have the return from the engine back to the tank. Again, I haven't ran that um, line from the engine yet, or of course the vent line either. So everything is stainless. And the reason why we ordered that is because with an aluminum boat, if you end up using the normal brass fittings and salt water gets on it, it'll create uh, copper salts 
and uh, those can end up in the bilge then. And copper and aluminum are not a good thing, so you try to keep everything um, brass, bronze, um, and of course copper away from aluminum. So we try to keep that out of there. Originally we thought that these were going to fit within our, our next to our fuel tanks. So having them of stainless steel was a lot more important at that time because the probability of them getting wet was much greater. Now that they're tucked back in here, it really isn't as big of a deal, but again, I already spent hundreds of dollars on these valves, and so there's really no going back. But I uh, haven't tightened up the, the hoses yet. Those, of course, will be all set up. And then over here, this is going to end up moved to this wall, running through a new conduit that's going to run up here um, to protect these um, our power lines that are kind of tangled in here now um, for the time being. Again, these will be strained up and mounted across here. Um, everything will be cleaned up. While Matt was busy doing those areas, I did end up taking over one more sewing project. Luckily, an easier one for me, much better than the uh, cushions for this uh, forward salon that I'm sitting in right now. Um, so what we ended up doing is, if you've been following the blog for a while, you'll know that um, just about a year ago we put in new plexiglass um, windows, ports, everything for the boat. And because we're sitting in this intense Florida heat, especially through the summer where there's no wind and we just had the sun baking and we didn't have any covers for the plexi. They've already started crazing a little bit, which isn't good. We have gotten a replacement sheet of plexi, so um, the company kind of honored the fact that our windows didn't even last a year, but uh, until we get those replaced, which probably won't be for another year or two, we need to just keep our plexi that we have now safe from any more heat. So what we've done is I have gone through with this umbrella material. I really should have looked it up before I started. Um, but it's a plastic material that's kind of like a screen, but it's a bit thicker. It's made out of plastic. It's sturdy. And so the job that I want to do is trace out the windows and um, make sure we can cover them with this so it will still um, keep, keep the windows shaded. It lets us see outside of them, but it doesn't trap the heat in, which we've heard from friends is a the problem. They've done the full covers and it kind of does the same thing that happened to our windows anyway it just traps the heat inside and they get crazy so this is a much better option um, so i'll take you through the process of what i did there to make these covers and we wanted them to fit as perfectly around our ports as possible um, we treated the sides of the pilot house and the front where there's um three windows together for each of those all is one so i would take this this really thick, almost like a construction paper type material. It's the brown paper that painters will use when they're laying down so they don't get messes on the floor. I would measure out a section a little bit larger than the windows and tape it around them. And then I would press the paper down around the edges and trace a line so that when I did transfer it to the material and fold my seam, the seam would end up right where the line was, right where the edge of the windows are. Once I'd have the lines perfectly traced onto the paper, I would then bring it down below to my workspace, which is kind of just our bed folded out without the mattress down. It's actually a pretty good table for working on these kinds of things. And I would um, make sure that the line was straight and uh, cut it out and then take that and um, set it aside while I did the measurements for the fabric itself. Um, since we don't have a lot, I didn't want to waste any, so I'd want to make sure that what I took from there was exactly what I needed. And once I had that cut out, which let's just say for one of the sides, it was about 16 inches tall by 72 inches wide, I would take the paper, lay it over the fabric, and pin it down, and I would take my pen and trace the line of where the edge ended, so that's going to be my seam, and that's where I want everything to end up so it fits perfectly. Trace that all the way around and then I would take my tape measure and um, measure another line about three quarters of an inch out to give myself that seam allowance. Um, <laughs> and from there I would cut the outside line so that it had the general shape plus my three quarter inch seam. I would take my pins and I would fold it down until I hit that first line I drew which I want to end up, it's going to be the perfect shape of the windows. 
And from that point, I would just do two stitches around, making sure to back my stitch so it doesn't come undone. And then it was time to take it outside and attach, which is the fun part, and even more fun making sure that it did actually fit. So I'll take you outside when we show you how that ended up. This is one of our hatch covers we've uh, just finished. It hasn't been attached yet, but you can see I've used the Pfeiffertex mesh vinyl. So it still gives a nice option to kind of see through breathability. And um, I don't know if this is the right one, but it just fits right over. So take it on and off as we please. And it's not too pretty from the outside, <laughs> not too pretty close up. So I won't show you too close, but you can just see done a double stitch there all the way around nothing too fancy and we have our full cover for the front there and I'll show you how we attach them so what we did to the plexi is we attached these um, 3m snads these ones are white the ones that we used on this plexi is black to match but they're just little plastic adhesives that go on there and then the snap sticks in and then we attach snap fasteners to the uh, Pfeiffer Tex. So you can see on the outside, they're just silver snaps. And when we take it off, <laughs> a little, little tight right now. Yeah, they haven't been used before. <laughs> no, they're still in good shape right yeah. now. Um, you can see the snads attached to the window underneath. So hopefully when these are off, they blend in pretty well. And then the snaps just go on the mesh fabric. And when we want them on, just snap it. <laughs> and there we go, nice shade inside. Um, and hopefully no more crazy into our plexi, so. And one of the biggest reasons as to why we use the snad fasteners is the fact that they don't, you don't have to drill through the plexiglass. Um, so there's nothing that's going to um, break the plexiglass at all from expansion and contraction. And also it's not going to lead a uh, pathway for water to go in uh, behind the, the uh, fastener. So that was my project this week. It actually turned out, I guess, as good as I could hope so. Until I do cushions, my sewing is done. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed our most recent episode. If you found it helpful or if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you'd like to support us and support future video production, you can always become a patron. We've got the uh, link in the box below. Say hi, Georgie girl. Yeah, she doesn't feel like talking apparently. Um, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can find the link below. We do have rewards for our patrons, such as early viewings of our videos about a week before they get released to everyone else. And as soon as we finalize our boat logo, we'll have things like t-shirts and koozies. And some of the rewards even have one-on-one uh, -on -one Skype calls with Matt and I. If you ever have any lingering boat questions you'd like to get in-depth with him about, or I guess I'd be more of the travel person. But either way, we'd love to have you join us on there. So that's all we have for now. Take care, and until next time. Join us in our next episode where we work to see if our engine will start for us after it's been sitting still in the Indian Town Marina for the past 10 plus years.